Speaking of no harm from shown associated with any approved crop, the most widely planted and widely consumed GMO crop of them all, Monsanto's Roundup Ready soybean, was subjected to rigorous long-term testing, two years. Most testing is either short-term or medium-term, which is only 90 days. Two-year testing, and the results uh, generated uh, uh, produced four different published papers, papers sub published in scientific uh, peer-reviewed journals, and among the, the harms to the mice that were fed that uh, soybean that were documented were disruptions to the functions of the liver and the pancreases, hardly minor, uh, minor inconveniences. Oops. So, the, uh, got ahead of myself there. Also, a, another genetically engineered crop that has been on the markets for, for many years and that uh, hundreds of millions of people have been consuming, uh, it was a, a, a variety of corn, or maize, more, more technically termed, but a variety of maize that, round, that Monsanto had produced to be resistant to Roundup. Okay, NK603 is the technical name of, of that variety. Now, scientists, a group of scientists in Europe, subjected that, that GMO corn to long-term testing. Monsanto had gotten it approved based on a 90-day test, medium test. So uh, they wanted to test it for two years and see what would happen. And they replicated what Monsanto had done, except they made the test more rigorous. They, uh, besides, they tested the corn as sprayed with Roundup. They tested the corn when it had been grown without being sprayed to see whether there was something perhaps in the genetic engineering itself that was problematic. And they tested the Roundup herbicide separately from the corn. They administered a dose of the herbicide in the drinking water of a third group of, of experimental rats at the same level, the same dosage that the rats would have received by consuming a normal helping of the genetically engineered corn that had been sprayed. Guess what? They found that all three categories of experimental rats suffered significant harm, <laughs> all three. So the corn, when sprayed with Roundup, was uh, found to be toxic to livers and to the kidneys. The corn, when unsprayed, was also toxic, and the Roundup on its own was found to be toxic. So not a very good, um, not <laughs> so of course, this study was soundly attacked, roundly, I shouldn't say soundly because the attacks were unsound. It was roundly attacked, vehemently, viciously attacked, and not surprisingly, the attack was initially orchestrated by Monsanto and with scientists that often will work uh, front for Monsanto and that have often been supported by Monsanto and to give the illusion that they're independent scientists, though. But eventually other components of, this, of the pro-GMO scientific establishment took up the attack as well. Now, many scientists uh, stood up for it. In fact, there was an open letter published by and, more than 140 scientists stating this research is solid and it deserves to stay published because the people doing the attack were trying to get the journal to, re to retract the study so they could claim it was worthless and that it was no longer in the scientific literature. And of, after about a year of attacks and also after the appointment of a former Monsanto scientist to the editorial board of the, uh, of the journal, a decision was made to retract the study. But there's some interesting points. First, that study was designed as a toxicological study. In the course of the study, it detected an abnormal rate of tumor growth within the experimental rats that were eating the GMOs or the Roundup. Now, the standard protocol in a, in a toxicological study is if tumors are detected, they need to be reported. So they reported that there were tumors too. That's all they did. That was an auxiliary part of the study. 
But because the toxicology, the toxicological study was solid, the editor of the journal couldn't really retract, base retraction on that data. In fact, he conceded that the toxicological results were reliable. But he fo so he focused on the, on the tumor reports, and he stated that they were inconclusive, and therefore that the uh, study had to be retracted. Well, as it turns out, inconclusive results is, are not, is not a valid grounds for retraction, okay? You can look at the standard criteria for retracting a study, and you won't find inconclusive results because many results are inconclusive, and yet that's news in itself. But the toxico toxicological results were valid, and they were conclusive. But what has been done? The scientific establishment has focused solely on the tumor results. They have pretended that the study was designed as a carcinogenicity study, and they say it was a, bad, it was a flawed carcinogenicity study, and they've completely suppressed the uh, fact that it was designed actually as a toxicological study, and it was a very sound toxicological study with very sound and troubling results. And even eminent uh, institutions like the UK Royal Society, they play that game. Our National Academy of Science here in the US, they played that game. They have, they have uh, basically dismissed and disparaged that study. And they, here's the thing, in 2016, our National Academy of Science released a major report on genetically engineered foods, uh, uh, putting a happy face on them. And when it discussed that study, it basically st stated again that, uh, you know, it was unreliable, uh, carcinogenicity study, inconclusive results, and it said, therefore, it, uh, although the critics of GMOs claim that it shows that that 90-day tests aren't long enough and that long-term two-year tests are needed to, de to adequately detect problems. It said, no, it doesn't show that. It shows 90-day tests are all right. When clearly the toxicological results did show that 90-day tests were not adequate to screen for all of the problems, that it often will take longer for the full toxicological effects to manifest. That's just scientific fraud, but it's happened. Now, that, the retraction uh, of, that, uh, of that article, it's been criticized strongly by scientists who understand what's going on and are independent of the push to, uh, you know, the push to promote GMOs. Here's one uh, example, um, an article written by scientists. It was published in the Journal of Biological Physics and Chemistry in 2018, and it was titled, entitled Retraction by Corruption, the 2012 Seralini paper. That was the paper that was retracted. Now, because, because that paper was solid, five other journals offered to publish it, to republish it, and so it was republished in 2014 in another journal, and it is currently, again, part of the scientific literature. 